Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a full face testing out some new makeup products. Now you guys know I bought a bunch of new drugs for makeup recently. I did a haul on that and I am still going to do like a full face with those items but yesterday I picked up the new Makeup by Mario foundation. I also recently got this new Too Faced palette in the mail so I'm just like Let's go ahead and try some more high-end stuff, and I do promise to do that drugstore video too. There's just so much already new stuff launching, it's kind of crazy. So yeah, we have a pretty good mix here, mostly high-end, and I'm going to include a couple new drugstore things as well. You may hear some hammering in the background. My husband's putting some flooring in in our kitchen. We're fixing it because it got all messed up. So just ignore that. But yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So since we are trying a new foundation today, I like to do some of my tried and true base products with it. So I'm going to be going in with my Hourglass Airbrush Primer. This I always know does a good job. So it should work with pretty much any foundation I put on. And then the brand new foundation, this is Mario's first ever foundation, which is really exciting. So it's called the Surreal Skin Foundation from Makeup by Mario. I went in stores and kind of swatched some. It runs fairly warm, so I picked up the shade 2N in this one. And this retails for $42. I was kind of surprised because I feel like a lot of his stuff is more mid-range but this seems just like very expensive um from the brand but i was really curious in trying it out since it is his first one it is described as a breathable luminous foundation that effortlessly builds and blends to illuminate the complexion with customizable long wearing coverage now we'll see how luminous this is sometimes i can wear luminous foundations i do have oily skin so as long as it's not too much i think we can get away with it it almost sounds like the house labs foundation in a way so let me go ahead and open this one up here's what the bottle looks like it does look very nice it does have the pump on it and i'm gonna go ahead and use my bk beauty 101 brush and we'll put some on so i'm gonna try and spread this evenly along the skin this is pretty light for me. Usually I will go a little bit deeper just because I'm often in between like self-tan, not self-tan. Right now I haven't self-tan in a minute, so I feel like I'm super light right now. But I don't know. It does match pretty well, but I feel like maybe in the future I would want just a little bit of a shade darker. But I just get into the trouble where it starts leaning more orange on me since it does run fairly warm but it does seem like a pretty good match right now okay so here's how it is looking i will say it does i feel like on the skin maybe look a little bit thick or heavy but it does just have that little bit of luminosity to it we're gonna let that sit for a minute while i switch to eyes so i'm just going in with some Too faced shadow insurance so I did buy that new Too Faced palette early on QVC. It actually took quite a while to ship. And I was thinking about doing a dedicated video, but then I just changed my mind because I had so much going on with end of the year videos. So I thought I would use it here. Now, I was a little bit skeptical to buy this just because I haven't been a huge fan of the palettes like this. This is called Pinker Times Ahead. And it has kind of the same packaging as like their Butterfly one from last year and their Teddy Bear one. Um, which looks like this, but I decided to pick it up because I felt like it was a little bit more colorful than Too Faced typically does. So I was like, let's try it out, um, see how it goes. Maybe I will like it, maybe not. I just always feel like I have to give them another try. I don't know. So the first shade I'm going to take is this one here. It's just a nice kind of medium crease color. I believe it's called Good Trouble. And we're going to put this in the crease. Next, we'll see if I can deepen that up even more with this shade. And this one's called Happy Camper. So I'm just putting that right on top. So far, the pigment seems pretty good on this one. With that same Happy Camper shade, I'm going to go on the lower lash line with it. Using my finger, let's dip into maybe this chunky pink in the middle. This is Girl's Girl. I'm putting this kind of in the middle. Oh, I forgot I was going to do an outer corner color. I am out of sorts here, but let me just keep that there. Outer corner, I wanted to use this hot pink. This is Free Spirit. We're super pink over here now. 
Um, I kind of want to switch it up a bit. I know I laid down that pink, but let me try this purple too. I just want to use as many colors as we can. This one actually seems a bit lighter. I'm just putting that in the middle. And then I did wet this brush here, and we're going to use this glittery champagne color. We'll see if it'll pick up the product. This is called the Sunday Fun Day, and that's going to go kind of in the inner portion. I honestly don't think this palette is as bad as I was expecting. I actually got pretty good pigment out of it. And the shimmers, they have a little bit of a different formula. They're kind of almost creamy, wet feeling, but they feel a little bit thick when you place them on the eyes. I know not everyone likes that, but they do show up very metallic-like. And I think this is a fun palette if you're looking for a pink look. Um, yeah, it's definitely a lot better than the one I tried last year. I think it was called the Too Femme palette with the butterflies on it. I was not impressed with that one, but this one actually has some pigment. So honestly, it's not so it's not so bad as I was expecting. I actually think it's pretty decent. I'm just gonna add a little white liner. I always love to do white when I'm doing color. It just really brightens up the eye. For concealer, I'm just gonna use my Sephora Best Skin Ever because I actually have a new brightener to try out. But yeah, I'm just going in with my normal concealer here. Love this one. Super affordable at Sephora. We're going to blend this out. And then before setting that down, we're actually going in with another product on top of it. This is brand new from Rare Beauty. I think it's, it might be available now, but I know it was only available for like a day on Sephora just to kind of hype people up. But yeah, Rare has been launching so many new products already. But this is actually called their Positive Light Under Eye Brightener. I chose the shade Light in this one. And basically, it's not really a concealer. It's just a brightener. You can use it without makeup and you can use it over top of your favorite concealer, which I'm going to do today. I have tried it with without makeup and I just really didn't see a huge difference that way so I wanted to see how it applies over concealer. So it's supposed to eliminate and refresh the under eye area. It has a luminous finish. It does have a little metal wand so it does get a little bit hard to apply the product. We're going to do one eye at a time so we could really see the difference here. I added quite a bit just because it is so light on the skin like it doesn't really have much coverage. So I'm actually going to just go ahead and blend this on with my finger here. So you can kind of see it has that little bit of luminosity. It doesn't look as dry as it did before. Here is before, here is after. So I do notice my lines are a little bit less noticeable over here. It's kind of blurring a bit more. Now I know, I think on the website it said that you don't have to set this down, but personally I cannot leave it this like tacky because I'm oily and my mascara is going to transfer onto it. So. I don't know if that like defeats the purpose if you put powder on top of it, but I probably will have to. Let me do the other eye here. So I do like it better with the concealer. I feel like it works a lot better for me when I just did it on its own. It just didn't seem like it did a whole lot, but I am gonna just, I am gonna just very lightly set this down just so it isn't moving all over the place. I still feel like it kept most of its brightness. I'm gonna go ahead and apply some mascara. So we're gonna use this L'Oreal Telescopic Lift. This is one of the new drugstore products. I did use it once and I was pretty impressed. So this is actually my second time using it, but I really love the look of my lashes with this one. But I try to just kinda brush it through the lashes and try to lift them up. All right, so that looks actually so good. Like there's a pretty noticeable difference using it. I just noticed so much length with this one. And it really grips onto the lashes so you can just like comb it through, which is nice. Okay, so there is the top lashes, pretty impressive. For brows, I'm just gonna use my House Labs brow pencil real quick. I'm just kind of outlining the edges here. And then I actually picked up a newer product. It's not super new, but it's new to me. This is the Too Faced Fluff and Hold Brow Gel. I picked this up on sale on their website recently, and I've heard good things about it, so I wanted to go ahead and try it. And I did give it one try already, and it was honestly pretty good. So this is a laminating brow wax, and it works honestly way better than I thought. 
So I'm just kind of going to comb through the eyebrows here. It seriously works so good. And I think I got it for like $11 or something like that. It was kind of crazy. It was like half off, 11 or 13 But I feel like it works almost like the Patrick Ta, like really similar, which I did not expect from Too Faced, but it's actually kind of a hidden gem. So I'm just kind of fluffing these up. This is kind of the style now, I guess. I don't like mine super fluffy, but I do like a little bit of hold. It just looks more natural on the face. If you need more precise application, you can go in and spread it out with like a spoolie a little bit more but it does such a good job so i've been really impressed with this okay for bronzer i've been loving my soul body one so i'm gonna go in with that one today in the shade medium it's just a cream bronzer and i use the bk beauty 106 brush for this and it seriously blends out so easily so just kind of tapping that in I like to do the very edges of the face as well and smoothing it all out so it's all nice and blended but it's such a nice formula to work with. I think this is also on sale. There's so many good stuff on sale right now with all the end of the year sales so you can get this one pretty affordable on ColourPop. So next we are going to use this product and this honestly has been sitting in my collection for a while unused so I really wanted to use it today. It's not super new, but I think it went kind of viral this year. Um, this is the Man Eater Cheek Plump. It's like a liquid blush from Tarte. And I have the shade Peachy Pink. So we're going to try this out. It's actually like a similar color to, I think, the Charlotte Tilbury Pink Gasm a little bit. So let's go ahead and just dot it on the skin. I didn't set anything down yet, so it should not have too many issues, I would think. So I like to blend mine with a brush. I don't know, it's just easier. Ooh, okay. It actually blends really nice. That does look a little bit like pinkasm. I would say it's maybe not as pigmented. It's actually like really easy to work with and it's not as shiny or metallic as pinkasm is, but I knew I should have tried this sooner. I like this formula. That was really easy to blend out. Really, really natural though. So maybe I would like a, a hint more pigment, um, but it's, it's pretty, I like it. Now I am gonna set the face really quick too, um, using just my tried and true one size powder. And I'm using this one because then um, this one keeps me pretty matte so I can tell if the makeup by Mario is too like greasy or if it's good for oily skin or if it's not um, since this powder usually does a pretty good job of keeping the oils at bay I won't put too too much on but I think that's good okay now we are on I think highlight I have a new highlighter I have not purchased a new highlight in I don't even know how long but everyone has been hyping up this product the rare beauty positive light silky touch highlight and I have the shade Exhilarate. Um, it was already sold out on the Sephora website. I think they did restock, but I had to get mine at the Sephora in Kohl's. So if there's ever something you're looking for on Sephora that's been out of stock, definitely check Kohl's because they always have it, I feel like. Um, so yeah, I've just been hearing so much about these. It says it's an ultra silky powder highlighter that melts onto the skin for an effortless glow. Now this is the second lightest, but I wanted to go for more of a champagne color. The other one was gorgeous. It was more of that pearly icy white, but I decided to go for something a little bit more maybe natural looking. So I'm going to just tap in my Sigma FO3 brush and we'll apply this on the cheeks. So this is very beaming in my opinion. It is very silky soft though. Like when you touch it, it literally feels so stinking smooth. It's very beautiful. I just like the feel of it. It's definitely very beaming though. I don't like so much of a dramatic highlight like this, so I'm going to tone it down a bit. But I don't know. I just feel like it is being raved about, but I'm just like, a lot of highlighters look like this on the skin, you know? So I'm like, is it really that great? I mean, I love the formula and all, and it feels really nice, but yeah, a lot of highlighters look like that on the skin. Let me add just a bit of powder over that. But I mean, it is really pretty. Once you kind of tone it down, you just really only need a little bit. And it's honestly, it's pretty flattering, I would say. 
like it doesn't enhance too much texture for how glowy it is so that is nice now i feel like i'm already losing some of my blush i put on <laughs> now for lips i'm gonna go ahead and line with this catrice lip liner i haven't tried these yet they're called the plumping lip liners which is kind of interesting it's long lasting lip liner with maxi lip that plumps the lips i don't know so let's go ahead and try this out i have the shade license to kiss okay these are like ultra creamy almost too creamy on the lips i do prefer something that's a little bit more stiff i am gonna throw something else on top this is the kaja heart melter moisture melt lip gloss stick which sounded kind of fun i have the shade let's chill and i don't think this is super new but it's new to me again i'm trying to use up some of these items but this is super fun it's a, in the shape of a little heart and it kind of reminds me of like the makeup by mario a little bit so let's go ahead and put this on you guys know i love these kind of glossy lipsticks that are trending right now and this one's really similar to the makeup by mario and the tart and i think i saw these on sale too plus they're adorable but i will say i'm not a huge fan of this lip liner i just feel like it's getting all over and it was not easy to do a line with because it was just like so creamy that it was going all over the place so now i'm just kind of trying to wipe away some of those lines okay so here's our finished look so far it's giving very springy valentine's vibes already i'm noticing the foundation is starting to cake just a bit in like my nose and lip area so we're gonna see how that wears sometimes when my natural oils start coming through then it just looks a lot better um once i wear it for a couple hours but so far everything does look nice and you guys know with these videos i do like to update you guys and show you how the makeup wore after a few hours so it's more of a like a realistic wear test for you um so yeah this is it so far and in the next clip we'll kind of see how it's all wore and kind of my final Final thoughts on the product hey guys i am back it has been about six hours and here is how the face is looking so let's start with the foundation i just now started getting a little bit of oil but i honestly feel like as far as the oil goes it's held up pretty well today so i was a little bit nervous about this being more of a radiant foundation but it actually pairs really well with my more mattifying primers and powders and i do feel like it looks pretty good though it's not really breaking up too bad the only thing i'm noticing it does look a little bit dry and textured in like this area here on my face a little bit down here as well so i do feel like it does pick up on some dry spots and texture spots if you guys have a problem with that that doesn't really bother me so much i don't feel like my texture is too bad where it bothers me but yeah I, I can see it being a little bit annoying here where it starts looking a little bit cakey in between my brows it's always like a weird dry spot for me but other than that it does look pretty nice i was honestly really surprised how well it held up for today now let me do a little powder just to kind of get rid of some of that oiliness here while we talk about some of the other products but as you can see the powder just kind of refreshed everything and yeah i could definitely still wear this for a bit longer the next product i wanted to talk about is the rare beauty serum uh brightener um personally i just feel like this is gonna be a pass for me i just don't really see a need for this product in my makeup routine i just want to use a regular concealer and be good to go maybe get something with a little bit more pink in it to like add the coverage i need and a little bit of that pink to brighten but this just really doesn't do a whole lot like trying it alone i barely notice a difference and the fact that this doesn't set very well it doesn't set down very well so my mascara transferred like right away i had to clean it up and i had to add more powder under there like there's no way you could wear this without powder even on its own because your mascara is going to get right onto it so it doesn't really actually self set it's just so light and i know it's not supposed to be a concealer but the, there's literally like hardly any coverage and it does make a little bit of a difference and I do feel like maybe if you have aging under eyes maybe you would like this just to add some more hydration under there um because yeah it didn't really sink into my fine lines at all but you can definitely see the darkness came back already from that like I could see a little bit of a shadow here so I don't know I don't think it holds up super well 
I'm just not in love. I just guess the only benefit is really the hydrating properties of it. Maybe I would try mixing it a little bit with my concealer and see how that does, putting them on both together. And then as far as the mascara goes, I actually do really like this one. I do think though it can clump up a little, so I don't know if it's like my favorite of all time, but I actually love the length this gives my lashes. And like I mentioned, I just got a little bit of transferring in the first hour or so because of my concealer, because the rest of the time it did not transfer for our smudge under the eyes and hasn't flaked off either and I just I don't know I think it looks really good on the eyes so I think this is a good drugstore find for sure now I'm actually quite shocked with the Too Faced Pinker Times Ahead palette I actually thought this performed pretty well it's definitely better than their last spring palette and it actually has held up throughout the day I don't really have any creasing or anything or much fading so it did stay on so this is definitely one that you may like if you really like pinks I don't know how much use I'm gonna get out of this color story because the blues the purple and the green were a little bit on the lighter side that is in this palette more like a topper almost but these shimmers are more thick but they do offer a lot more pigment than some of their other shadows that I've tried so I was impressed with the mattes too I thought the mattes were pretty pigmented I didn't have any issue with fallout or anything so it seems like a decent palette but I always say with Too Faced never pay full price for their stuff because it always goes on sale so personally I would hold out for a sale on this one because you know it's gonna happen it's gonna go on clearance that's just what we expect until if their whole brands decides to honestly lower their prices in general we're just always gonna see sales I I know that this palette I think is in the $35 range so it's not as expensive as some of their tin uh, chocolate palettes but it's still up there in price but yeah I just I thought it was okay not bad honestly a lot better than last year's palette the Tarte Man Eater blush I really loved applying this on the cheeks I thought it was so easy to use but I feel like it has faded like completely <laughs> on my skin I don't know I know it was pretty light at first but I just don't see it there anymore so I don't know if I really I really like this one um really love the formula like I mentioned but I'm gonna need some more pigment out of it so as far as it being a Charlotte Tilbury dupe I'll have to say it is not definitely the peak gasm from Charlotte Tilbury stays on me all day this one faded pretty quickly but uh, I love the formula so maybe I would just have to try a different shade and then the Too Faced fluff and hold brow wax I actually think this is a really good product I love it it's one of my favorite new brow gels I really like that it holds the lashes in place for a long time mine have fallen just a bit but honestly it's not bad at all I would definitely compare this to the Patrick Ta one and this one's even cheaper so I think it's worth checking out and then the rare beauty highlight I'm pretty impressed with this one I mean it is just like a highlighter but it was super silky and and soft and it actually did stay on my skin pretty well so it does look very beautiful on the skin I feel like it is flattering doesn't enhance texture so haven't purchased a new highlight in a minute but this one is it's a good one I will say I do agree with the hype now you guys know I did not care for the Catrice lip liner it's just too creamy of a formula and I prefer something with a little bit more tug now I do like this Kaja heart melter gloss stick though I thought this was so fun I still have a little bit of staining on the lips but for the most part since I ate dinner and everything it has worn off but these are so pretty it's definitely that same kind of trendy uh, same thing as Tarte, same thing as Makeup by Mario. So it's not necessarily a necessity in your collection, but I think these are a little bit cheaper because I feel like they were on sale for a bit. But I am curious in trying more colors. I do like the formula a lot. And the little heart is just too cute with this one. So I did enjoy this one quite a bit. So that's going to complete this testing new makeup video. Let me know your thoughts about these. I cannot wait to try these products a little bit more, especially with the foundation. I definitely want to give that a couple more tries, pairing it with different things here and there. But so far, it does look pretty good. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.